In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the silver and gold winners and losers of 2023. And for a little fun, I'm going to be responding to some dickhead comments. Let's get into it. How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you blast that subscribe button and get the bell notification clicked. That way you get updated with any new content. Today I wanted to talk about some of the best silver and gold coins of 2023 as well as the worst and also going into 2024 and what you can expect. But before I do, I wanted to respond to one of these comments. Now, a lot of the times that I get comments. I will read them, but I don't always have a lot of time to respond. So most of the time, if you are commenting on the channel on a video, most of the time you're going to get a thumbs up from me and a heart showing you that I liked it and that I read it. Every once in a blue moon, I will respond. But again, I just don't have enough time to go through the hundreds or thousands of comments that I get on a daily basis. But every once in a while, I will get some trolls in the comments and I typically don't respond to them. Usually I'll actually just delete them. Now this one comment that I received, it's not exactly from a troll, but what bothers me is that sometimes you get these comments as a content creator, you get these comments from people that don't really know their uh, head from the, and their asshole. Okay. Um, this person, Jim Talbot, 2095, he writes in, in response to this video that I made called the silver you must buy and avoid. I would avoid all five collector series. Silver pieces are like beanie babies or other knickknacks. The hype is very short lived. Stick to federally minted rare coins to collect and flip and you'll be better off. That's what the smart ones do that and stack bullion as for buying those comic book coins and others like them. There's an old saying. There's a fool born every minute. Well, uh, Jim Talbot, my response essentially to Jim, and you guys could check out the video yourself. My response to him was, I assume that you have several years involved in the buying and selling of precious metals and that you've generated at least six, seven figures in revenue based on all of those sales and that you have a lot of experience. This guy couldn't be any more incorrect even if he tried as a precious metals dealer which i am and i am also a stacker i do stack precious metals for myself there are some coins that yes you want to buy and flip right away and that might be what this guy jim is talking about but most of the time if you know what you're doing and I like to think that I do. I've been doing this now for about five years. If you pick the right pieces, you can profit a lot of money. There's a reason why that this is a multi-billion with a B, a multi-billion dollar industry and that you have huge bullion dealers and companies online like Atmex, JM, SD Bullion, Provident, Bold Precious Metals, uh, LPM. You've got a lot of these companies that deal in precious metals and generate hundreds of millions, if not, sorry, billions of dollars each year, as well as all of the mints. And you have to think about all of the coin shops and you have to think about all of the eBay sellers and whatnot and drip and TikTok and Instagram and all of the different dealers that are on social media. All of these people would not be involved in this business, especially with collectibles, if there was no value in them. This guy doesn't know, like I said, he doesn't know his head from, from his ass and uh, clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. A lot of the coins that I have bought and sold, I would say about 99.9% .9 of the time, I have always turned a profit. That's why I've been able to sustain the channel. That's why I've been able to sustain the business. It's because I know what I am doing and I know that the collectibles make a lot of money in return now yes you can buy your run-of-the-mill 10 ounce silver bars that are a dime a dozen and that you're going to buy these and hold on to them because of the spot price and you're going to hold those long term as some sort of uh, savings if you will yeah that's absolutely fine but when it comes to something like this which just came in today and if you're not following me on Instagram make sure that you are Empire Precious Metals these are the two, either the two ounce or two and a half ounce uh, St. Michael's 
uh, swords. These aren't coins. These are considered bars, but they are absolutely stunning. I've got many. I don't want to drop them, but I mean, I've got dozens and dozens of these in. And it's things like this that do very, very well in the secondary market. Just another example to prove Dickhead Jim incorrect. Uh, recently, DC trading coins were released by none other than New Zealand Mint. New Zealand Mint, okay, they have produced the uh, Star Wars trading coins, which have done very, very well, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Marvel trading coins, which also have done very, very well. And the DC trading coins, which again, just released yesterday to the general public. They sold out within minutes and already sealed boxes are going on eBay. Sold prices, $600, $700 a piece. And that's the sold prices. And that's within a day. Why is that? Okay. Well, uh, again, just to respond to this guy, Jim and other people who think along the same lines as as Jim does, and they don't know any better. Um, let's look at the Star Wars coins, for example. The Star Wars trading coins, I made the mistake of not buying them when they were first released because from the wholesale perspective, I'm able to buy, I have wholesale accounts set up with multiple wholesalers, and I also have uh, connections to a bunch of distributors. So I'm able to get these things for cheaper than what New Zealand Mint is offering them retail on their site. So going back to the Star Wars coins, they were wholesaling for, I want to say, I don't want to give away the exact numbers, but they were below the retail price of $299, okay? In my opinion, at first, to get two one-ounce silver coins at the price of, you know, $299, you're paying $150 an ounce. It's like, oh my God, that's, that's astronomically high. And yeah, I've sold expensive pieces before, but, you know, you kind of start thinking about uh, ounces to dollars. You know, how much is somebody willing to pay for one ounce of silver, two ounces of silver? Because there comes a point when somebody's making that buying decision that they are going to say, eh, you know, if I'm going to spend $300 on some silver, I may as well put that towards, you know, 10 silver eagles. I get 10 ounces as opposed to two ounce uh, coins. The silver trading coins, the Star Wars ones, they've got a whole bunch of different characters that range in, in rarity. And... The most expensive, the chase coin, if you will, is the quarter ounce Darth Vader coin. Only 10 of those were minted in a total uh, run of, I believe, 2,500 boxes. One of those quarter ounce gold Darth Vader coins, and I've mentioned this before on a previous video, sold, sold for $25,000 on eBay. I want you to just think about that for a minute. $25,000. Now this guy, Jim, who commented and some other people every once in a while, I'll get those types of comments, you know, silver, silver, why the hell would you pay that kind of money? That's an example right there. And they're going to say, oh, there's a fool born every minute. I mean, there are people who have some serious deep pockets where for the everyday person like you and myself, a quarter ounce of gold, you know, you'll buy for maybe $600 right now at the time of the recording of this video. But there's other people out there that just want to collect it and it doesn't matter. Money's no object. They've got plenty of money. It doesn't make a difference and they'll spend $10,000, $20,000, on a particular collectible. So I misjudged the ability for those Star Wars coins to do well, especially in the secondary market. Luckily, because of my relationships that I've built over the last five years in the industry, I was able to get my wholesaler to allocate me some of the Marvel coins. The Marvel coins, I was able to buy below the retail price of 300 bucks, and I was able to sell them for about, I would say, 100 to $200 profit per box. And while some of you might think that, well, that's astronomically high, guys, again, look at the eBay sold prices. They go for seven to $800 sealed. I broke some of those boxes live on the channel, and right off the bat, one of my subscribers ended up getting a number one of 20 of, I believe it was Captain Marvel. And because it was number one of 20, number one, it was rare. Number two, it had a very good serial number. He was able to turn that around and sell it for $2,300. So again, collectibles, you could do very well. 
And even if you are buying these sealed boxes and you're not opening them, you're not breaking them to see what's inside and hoping to win, if you're just buying it sealed and selling it on uh, eBay or whatnot or Drip or whatever, you can stand to make a lot of money because there are so many people out there that are going to want to buy that chance. It's a dopamine rush. They get that fix. It's like gambling. It's like getting a lottery ticket. It's no different than any of those live breaks that you'll see of people opening up sports cards, Pokemon cards, Magic the Gathering. Um, and also more recently, you see a lot of the vault boxes which sell $300, $400, or $500 a piece on the website, but then they are going for $1,500 sealed on platforms like whatnot. So, uh, no, uh, Jim, you're very incorrect with your stance. If you, you know, get your head out of your ass, you know, you might learn something. Um, Buying like Silver Eagles, you know, something like that. Buying Silver Eagles, yeah, you're going to spend... You know, 600 bucks for a tube right now, you know, 25, $26 per Eagle, 27 bucks. And, but those are a dime a dozen. So when I'm talking to people about buying precious metals, I always tell them, well, first of all, I ask them, number one, what's your budget? And number two, what is it that you're looking to do? Because there are so many different types of stackers out there. What is it that you are looking to accomplish? Are you looking to just do that long-term savings or are you looking to really like hang on to uh, you know, your gold coins, your silver coins for generational wealth? Are you looking for retirement, uh, supplemental income for your retirement? Or are you looking to do some flipping, buying and selling, trying to make a, a profit, trying to make ends meet and, and doing a side hustle? Are you doing this full time? I mean, there's so many different mindsets and strategies and things that you can be doing when it comes to stacking and buying silver and gold and selling silver and gold. So when I'm telling people to get into this hobby, yes, I do tell them for a stacking perspective, you do want to get yourself run of the mill generic type of things like like these, you know, items here, a tube of eagles, uh, 10 ounce silver bars, maybe a, qu- a quarter ounce or an ounce gold coin here or there. Those things though are so replaceable things like like this that I deal in all day long these holographic dragon bars um you know these half ounce saint michael shields there's a lot of pieces that if you pay attention to the hype in social media on youtube on instagram on facebook i mean if you just read and see what the buzz is it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the trends and to see which products do well and which products don't it takes a little bit of time. And uh, if you don't have time and you are looking to get into buying and selling silver and gold, it can be very lucrative. It can be very rewarding. It's really fun. It is probably, I would I, dare I say, one of the only hobbies that you are spending money, but you're not really spending money. You're converting your dollars into a hard physical asset that still maintains value. Yes, it fluctuates, but still holds its value. It's never going down to zero and you're never really going to get hosed unless you're just, you know, backing up the truck, dumping everything all at once into silver and gold and uh, hoping that it takes off. Don't do that. You want to be doing this consistently. And the reason why it works for me and other online uh, dealers and social media influencers is because we're constantly buying. Each week, stuff is coming in and we're constantly selling things to the general public, but stuff continues to come in and you continue to sell it and it just keeps on you know, circulating. That's why it works. If you're somebody that's thinking about just buying and holding it and throwing it in a safe somewhere and just hoping that one day it's going to go up in value, that's a gamble. That's not going to guarantee that you're going to do well. I don't suggest that. All right, so getting into the silver and gold winners and losers of 2023 and 2024, arguably, again, and a lot of people have talked about this. Let me pull this up for for you guys. The Revolver coin, which uh, came out Last year, I probably bought and sold, I want to say about 70 of these things. Absolutely beautiful coin. Uh, These were an exclusive for bullion exchanges. Um, They were designed by Spectres Online. Give them a follow on Instagram. Those, without a doubt, were the big hit 
for 2023. The majority of everybody who who owns those all agree. For this year, 2024, they just released the 45 uh, caliber or the 45 Magnum handgun. It came in three variations. I have an order out for about uh, 30 total. And there's a little bit mixed reviews on this because now you've got, you know, the new coin in the in the series. And the issue is with the revolver, there were 5,000 minted. But with these handguns, there's 1,000 minted of each type. And there's people that like to collect coins in series and want to have the complete set. But, you know, now here they feel, and this is kind of the general consensus that I'm, I'm getting, is that they feel like they are kind of being forced into buying all three of these coins. Yeah, you, you don't have to buy all three. But what's going to happen is they're going to buy, you know, the black one with the uh, gold gilding on the grip. But they're going to feel like, oh, man, but I'm missing the other two. And so what they ended up doing is they cut down the mintage from a 5,000 for the revolver down to a total of 3,000. But across three pieces, they're looking to probably churn through these products more quickly. I've already I've already voiced this feedback to Spectres Online. I haven't had the opportunity to speak to uh, bullion exchanges just yet. However, that's my feedback. I think it's still a hit. Is it as big as the the revolver? I don't know. You, you're not seeing as much hype on the Magnum as you are the revolver. Now, if they just released one revolver and and lowered that mintage down to three thousand or even twenty five hundred, I think they could have had a grand slam there. Um, that's in my opinion, though, one of the. It's still a hit for twenty twenty four, but it's like a cautious hit. This also came out in twenty twenty three, and I I showcased this on my YouTube live auctions, which are. Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Eastern on the YouTube channel here. It's the Mike Tyson silver and gold trading card coins. First type of product like this where it's an actual slabbed and graded sports card, but it is a coin as well. People are going to say, that's not a coin. Those are the people that don't know what they're talking about. It has a government-backed monetary amount on it. There you see this is King Charles. I'm trying to yeah, King Charles, it's got a monetary value. It is a government-backed coin. It just happens to be in the shape and have a picture of Mike Tyson. It's in a in the shape of a card, but it's slabbed and graded by NGC 10.0. Really, really cool pieces. And what's awesome about these is it's the first of its kind. They have some of these autographed as well, and they are going to be releasing uh, more celebrities. Uh, they've done Ric Flair. They've done a few others. And so those are really cool products. So keep an eye on those and other upcoming releases from Celebrity Mint who makes those coins. I'm trying to think of some other really great coins from 2023 and 2024. What's upcoming? I would say for 2024, Atmex still has the Black Flag series. They just released the images for the fancy the fancy is going to be in my opinion another good coin really cool design there are people that are excited for it and i think that's really it that's the only thing right now that i can think of the problem is and guys i will hear about coins months in advance sometimes because i get information from the wholesalers who are getting the information directly from the mints well in advance of the actual retail releases. So if you're ever looking for some more information, or if you, again, are interested in getting into buying and selling silver and gold coins, or you're just looking to collect, or you want to get stuff before other people and get in at better prices, you want to join my channel and you want to join my Discord group, you have to be a member of the channel in order to join. But guys, it's a great community. I highly recommend it. And also check out my website, empirepreciousmetals.com. Some of the items that I showed you today, I have them on my website. There's so much on there. Definitely check it out. Can you get stuff cheaper elsewhere? Yeah, probably. You absolutely probably can, but sometimes you might not be able to find it. I've been here on YouTube for now going on five years. I'm a trusted source. So you definitely can check out my website and buy in confidence. So guys, anyway, let me know in the comments 
What were the best coins that you picked up in 2023? And what are you looking forward to in 2024? And again, make sure you blast that subscribe button, get the bell notification clicked and hit that like button. And guys, I will see you on the next one.